Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be exceedingly glad in it because God is, watch this, good. All the time. And he's worthy to be praised. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going we're gonna to talk about the goodness of God. And that is, um, uh, you know, that's what you can believe in today. The goodness of God, you know, it's not just a cliche, but you can actually reach out and start walking in that goodness and begin to release your faith in the goodness of God. Yes. So today we want you to believe to see the goodness of God. Yep. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And so the fact that you are here this morning and that you are able to connect with us from wherever you are. That's goodness. All around the world. That is the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. That is the graciousness of God. That mm -hmm. is the Hasid mercy, his loving kindness, his tender mercies that are over you today. And so we're just thankful for you tuning in and starting off your week with us. Mm -hmm. And we pray that you had a wonderful weekend, that you had a blessed time and that you uh, in some way have been so encouraged by God's graciousness towards you today. So we just welcome you. We're so thankful and we are excited about you and God's plan for your life. So good morning. Good morning. We send blessings to those of you in California. Uh, England is with us this morning. We send blessings to Charlotte, North Carolina, morning and evening, wherever you may be. Uh, Miami, Florida is uh, online and streaming in with us. Cleveland, Cleveland. Oh, we, we beat Cleveland yesterday in the football game. Oh. No, you oh, did that's where not. I heard that name no, from. Cleveland. Not. No, Cleveland almost beat <laughs> us, but I'll take it. It was Praise a good God. day of football. Of course, we watched it. We missed the first game, which was at 9 30. We were at church. Yep. But all afternoon, all evening, it was great. Yeah, yeah. They NFL played NFL football. They played in London yesterday. And uh, you know, uh, New Orleans got whipped. And uh, it was it was just good. It's just all the games have been great. I've been enjoying them. And to me, that's the goodness of God. God knows and understands that I enjoy stuff. I just enjoy good competition. I love it. And um, the Falcons just, winning was good, wasn't it? Yeah, they've been competitive. You know, I already made my mind up. Even if they lose, I'm impressed because at least they're competitive. You know, I didn't go look at a high school game. I went to see professionals play. So. Yeah, it was a good day there. And I'm, I'm saying this kind of stuff because God's goodness should uh, uh, translate into your everyday living. Anything good that has ever happened to you, you got to learn how to look up and to say, thank you, God. Thank you so much for for the goodness. Uh, yes, because we easily can take it for granted and just not pause and acknowledge Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank for you, Lord. For your goodness. Thank you, Lord. That we can connect, that you can connect with us. We can mm -hmm. connect with you. He uses his technology for his goodness. Yeah. Yeah. He does. And I mean, we got people, Taffy, our family in Zimbabwe is in here this morning in Canada yeah, and Philadelphia. That's it's the, it's the goodness of the Lord that we are able to, 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 to connect. You know, folks from College Park, my place. Yeah. Jacksonville, Florida, Savannah, Georgia. We're able to connect because of the goodness of God. And um, Tab's going to talk a little bit about that. But while everybody's logging in, let me give you just like 10 really quick ways to 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 uh, recognize the goodness of, Lord, of oh, God. Oh, you're diving in. Come on. Yeah, let's do it. Number one, you can recognize God's goodness in nature. What? In nature. I love that. Genesis 1 and 31, he says, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. So you can, you know, when we go and we look at canyons and we look at the creation of God and just in nature, you can see the goodness of God. Number two, you can recognize God's goodness in people. Yes. Romans 8 and 28, he says, and we know 
that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. So even though weird things happen, uh -huh. God knows how to bring the goodness out of it. And so we can recognize God's goodness in people. We can see God mature. I mean, God maturing our lives as a result of things going on. So we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the goodness. So, so we love God because we believe and we know God loves us. And so when things happen to our lives, the first thing we go to is some goodness is somewhere around here. Yeah. Some goodness is working around here. I can always see the goodness of God in you, babe. Yeah. You're just so good to me. Always have been. Well, thank you. Um, just so helpful. And mm. last night you just helped in the kitchen. And so I just what I do thankful last night for. Kitchen. Oh, yeah. We just got we just team up, man. We, you know, it's like, you know, ain't nobody got no title says, you know, kitchen. You just you just do what you do. You do what you do. OK. Uh, number three, recognize God's goodness in answered prayers In answered prayers. You just said that Psalms 34, eight, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. And so the goodness of the Lord is recognized in answered prayer. Number four, you recognize God's goodness in the truth of his word. Man, when you see the truth of God's word, I, I think that's what our church experienced yesterday. You know, when you start seeing the truth of God's word, you see God's goodness. First Timothy four and four through five says for everything created by God is good. Everything. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. So we can recognize goodness uh, through the word. Number five, we recognize goodness, God's goodness in his blessings. Yeah. And mm, his blessings. Psalms 31, 19. Yes. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge, refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. Oh, how abundant is your goodness. Boy, you just don't know how how abundant God's goodness is. You know, if if if, if you don't know that, then you 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 have to say, you know, do I believe that God's goodness is abundant in every area of my life. Number six, recognize God's goodness in his providence, in his provision. Yes. Recognize God's goodness in his provision. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, for I know the plans I have for you, That's declare the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and give you a hope. Recognize God's goodness in his provisions for your life. Number seven, recognize god's goodness in your breath what oh. another day of life is what i'm saying another breath day of life you recognize my that lungs. yeah air that i breathe every day of your life man that's I'm, his goodness that's his goodness the bible says in, in james 1 17 every good gift and every perfect gift is where it's from above it cometh down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due change james 1 and 17 and then eight recognize god's goodness in his forgiveness wow when you start thinking about how crazy you have been oh and he died it. and shed his blood to forgive you of all that i mean if you just sit back sometimes and i probably don't recommend you do it and just think about what you used to do and what, what you used to be and how you used to think. Oh, my goodness. And here you are saved. You recognize God's goodness in his forgiveness, in his forgiveness. First John 1, 9, of course. The number of sins that he's forgiven us of, it's the amount of covering. It's crazy. That he is just Where were overlooked. Where you? Yeah. And just, oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, man. It. It's good. It's overwhelming. 3, 16. Yeah. It's over. It's God overwhelming. So love the world. How God so loved us that he sent his son and how he just forgives us over and over. Not just one time. Yeah. In, in spite of yourself. Yeah. In spite of yourself. And just, you know, we all have a past. We, we don't we don't we just don't live there. But boy, every now and then I think about Lord, have mercy. Look at the goodness of God. Oh, glory to God. You get that umption real quick. Mm. Oh, you start thinking about. Eh, thank you. And then you. Oh, you have to catch yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. God is good. Number nine, 
recognize God's goodness in acts of kindness. In acts of kindness. That's the goodness of the Lord. Yes. That is the goodness of the Lord. And that's where we come into play, where we can show kindness to other people. Yeah. That God wants to use you to show his goodness. Yes. Acts of kindness. How is God going to use you to show somebody some goodness today? And that's worship, really. It's like, oh, God, you know, what do you want to do in me and through me today? That is. And um, so uh, Psalms 145. Psalms 145 and 9 says the Lord is good to all. Whoa. To, not just some. Catch Whoa. that. Whoa. He's good to all. And his mercy is over all that he has made. That's strong. It he's is. good to all. So don't ever think, well, you know, I go to such and so, such and so church. So he only good to me. No, it was the goodness of the Lord that will cause a person to repent and change his heart and his change his mind and heart about how he's living. That comes through the goodness of the Lord. The Lord is good to all. So yeah. that includes you mm-hmm. and me. Yeah. And then finally, and I'm going to let Taffy take it from here. Uh, <laughs> I just I wanted to squeeze it. these in real quick. It was just so good. It blessed me so much. He says, uh, number 10 is recognize God's goodness at the cross. Oh, Recognize God's goodness at the cross. And she at just said, it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave goodness. So that so that those who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What did he give us on the cross? Goodness was on that cross. You understand? Mm. Goodness was on that cross. And so, you know, whosoever would believe, you know, in that goodness, David said, I had to believe to receive the goodness of the Lord. So while the goodness of the Lord is available, the question is, are you walking in that goodness? And that means, you know, it starts by faith. It starts by faith. I I believe I receive. I believe I receive the goodness of the Lord in my life. I believe that today I will see the goodness of the Lord in, in, in my life. I am alive. I believe while I'm living, I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord yes. uh, in my life. And so, amen. We're talking about the goodness of God today. That is so good. And you think about the cross, the fact that, you know, it was such a, horrific situation right Mm -hmm. being on the cross being crucified just the asphyxiation and all the things that are associated with someone who was crucified but in light of that you said that that is goodness it's goodness it's goodness i mean think about all the things that came forth from the cross it humbled the apostle paul paul said i am the least of the apostle. He said, I'm not even worth being even called an apostle. Once he started looking at, look all the stupid stuff I did and look at what came from the cross that you are now offering me to be elevated to the same level of your son, Jesus Christ. Paul said, man, I don't even know God. He's like, that's goodness. That's goodness. And and he kept himself humble and um, God just in due time, exalt him in due season. But that that's yeah. Could it be that it was good for us, but was it good for Jesus? Mm, well, because, I mean, you think about the things that he had to do and what he had to pay for and the things that he had to endure, go to hell for us, get the keys of death and the grave and to uh, pay the price to be the sacrifice, to be the ransom, the propitiation of our sins. Mm-hmm. It just seems like that was such a hard job for him. But yet we got so much out of it. Yeah, it's we like we benefited far more. But he humbled himself. You know, we were talking about that yesterday in church. The fact that his whole love, what we, we said that love is humility because they, they want the same thing. I mean, love is not arrogant. Love is not boastful. Love is not rude. Well, that's the path of humility. Humility is not arrogant. Humility is not boastful. It is not rude. Jesus willfully, willfully did all of that for us. Showed us all that goodness because, you know, he came from goodness and he knew we're going back to goodness. You know, and when he was on the earth, he was goodness. He was was goodness, man. I mean, he's he's good. Scripture says he went about doing good. Yeah. Healing all yeah. who were oppressed of the devil because God was with them. But you know what? That's interesting here, too, because his healing was available for all who were oppressed of the devil. 
but not all received it. Why? Because right. not all believed it. Yeah. And even though goodness is there, uh, you know, you got to ask yourself, if you know, why? how come I ain't got none of it? You got to believe to receive you it. You got to believe to receive it. You got to believe to receive it. I, we, we were honored to be able to spend some time with Oral Roberts. He and Evelyn, so precious to host them years ago. And when he started talking about the goodness of God mm -hmm. and how he start saying something good is going to yeah, happen. Yeah, he did. People got mad at him for that. Yeah. yeah. And God is a good God. Yeah. Yeah. People were upset. They say, how in the world can you say that God is good? And I think he responded, well, would you be happy if I said God is bad and something bad going to happen to you today? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. See, see, he understood about setting the thermostat. And, uh, to just the declaration that something good is going to happen to you today, it just sets the thermostat, and and you're 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 all day just walking around believing to see the goodness of the Lord. Do that today. Do that today. I believe today, Taffy. I'm gonna see the goodness of the Lord. For I've already seen the goodness of the Lord. I've already seen the good. Somebody figured out how to make me some whole food, plant based pancakes. <laughs> I, that was the goodness of the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> That, after the workout I had this morning, that was the goodness of the Lord. You so better shout somebody. The goodness of it's the, the Lord. goodness of the Lord. I'm, I don't care what nobody said. That's the goodness of the Lord. So it's already happening. Yeah, it's already happening. But I believe me. he can do a little bit more besides just I, that. I, 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 be, believe. I believe he will. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord today. Oh, I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah, this Some is food. Yeah, Hallelujah. this is good. This is good. And, and it's something that, you know, sometimes we get all distracted with all of the 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 drama in life that uh, we don't pause to just recognize <laughs> the goodness of God. He said, think about this scripture, and I mentioned it a few minutes ago, that the goodness of the Lord will bring a man to repentance, or that word literally means to change the mind. Oh my goodness! You God's gonna to God's now. gonna show His goodness because there there are a lot of people that need to change their mind. I'm trying to take my keep my seat here. Yeah, they need to change their mind. And, it's and, the goodness that will cause people to change. Not bad judgment. Not making you sick. Not, not fault finding. Not, not fault shame. Find, no, he's not gonna. That's not how he. That's how. See, sometimes church people think this is how you cause them to change. Punish them for every sin. You know. Uh, well, you got to understand something. You know, you. You, you, you're a Christian. You ought not listen to world of music. And if you do, I'm going to put you out the church. Well, what the world? What, what is that? Is that ain't Jesus? What Jesus y'all talking about? That's not Jesus. See, for you to judge somebody that severely, you have to deny and cover up your own issue. For you to look at somebody and say, well, you know, I'm condemning you because of your issue is to say you ain't got no issues. I mean, you, you how you gonna do that? It, like you ain't got no issue in your life, and everybody in the house got an issue. Yes, and, and you you walking around condemning people like you don't have an issue instead of recognizing the same goodness that God is showing you, He is showing that person. And what happens if you'll give people the room to develop and mature, the goodness of God will come in and change that person's mind. The goodness of God will change their mind that some of the stuff they used to do when they were uh, not born again, they ain't gonna want to do it no more. But my God, we catch the fish and we think the fish supposed to be clean when we catch it. And that's not, you got to understand that the Holy Spirit is, is working every day in our lives and he's taken away our our old want to's and giving us new want to's. That's the goodness of God. God knows how to change your mind. Yes. And he says the goodness of God, the goodness of God will bring a man to repentance. It will bring somebody to change his mind. Yes. Uh, will cause them to want Jesus will cause them to want to be around you, to cause them to be attracted to you. Yeah. Is his Goodness. But you know what? One thing I realized and one thing that the Lord shared me, with me, he said, you're too hard on yourself. Oh, yeah. And I think sometimes when we are so hard on ourselves, yeah. it's easier for us to be harder on other people. Oh, boy. And so when we don't see God's goodness in us and we don't 
begin to believe for God's goodness, then we're thinking that it's just so hard to be a Christian. It's so hard to be a parent. It's so hard. And, you know, things are challenging, but more than anything else, we have to realize that we cannot allow the enemy to just pile on shame and make things more difficult than what they really are. Yeah, because how you treat yourself is how you'll treat other people. That's right. And and, and we got to recognize that how you treat yourself is how you're going to treat other people. If you if you treat yourself, uh, you know, you know, you think of yourself as bad, uh, bad, then you're going to treat other people bad. Not good enough. Yeah. Can't measure up. Yeah. Uh, just all those things being hard on ourselves. If Jesus was willing to pay the price for you and saw the value in you, you've got to see it in yourself. Yeah. You, you have to, you've got to see. Yeah. And you got to believe that, uh, you know, uh, it's a sad thing, but you don't, sometimes you, you don't even need the Holy spirit to whisper something in your ears. If you just, if you just pay attention to what people say and how they act, they they are telling you everything that you need to know about that that person. And uh, God wants to show us goodness. God wants to be good in our lives. He does every day, all day, yeah, all the time. Yeah, you know inferiority. It says it's continually. The goodness of God endures continually. It didn't just stop. That's good, Tappy. It's Psalms 52, verse one says, working all the, the time. goodness of God endures continually. Mm. The goodness of God endures. You know, that word endurance is amazing. That means the goodness of God can outlast whatever junk you're going through. The goodness of God can outlast your bad attitude. Man, that's good. The goodness of God can outlast your negative talking. The goodness of God can outlast your little secret sin. The goodness of God will endure continually and there is nothing you can do to turn it off (laughs) hey that goodness is 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 pursuing you right now that's right it may be pursuing you through this this teaching this morning he's trying to pursue you he's trying to he's trying to say he's trying to get you to stick them up say say surrender to the goodness of god (laughs) surrender to the goodness of god if anything good has happened to happen to you that's god Stop giving yourself credit for something that's God that God's responsible for. That's not you. If you didn't have the breath to breathe, you wouldn't be able to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Stop it. It's God that's showing you. And it's time for you to recognize it's God. And it's time for you to give God the glory and to praise him and to go in a bathroom and get a stall that echoes and shout unto <laughs> God and thank him for the goodness. <laughs> and then look around the hallway. There ain't nobody looking. You need to run down that hallway real quick and just thank God for the goodness of God. It endures continuously. So the devil may make you think, well, you don't understand. You don't, you didn't did so many bad things that ain't no way in the world. God going to show you no goodness. But what you don't understand is your crazy cannot outlast God's goodness. It sure cannot. It cannot. It cannot. God's goodness is going to outlast your crazy. Yes. And as crazy as you get, one day you're going to get still in your crazy and paralyzed in your crazy, and then you're going to see the goodness of God. That's exactly what happened to the Apostle Paul. Man, this dude going around just reaping havoc in the church and yes. persecuting folks and on his way to persecute somebody else. And Jesus stopped him. And said, look, man, why are you persecuting me? He said, I ain't did nothing to you. He said, well, when you do it to my to, the, to them, you've done it unto me. He showed up with his goodness, mm-hmm. his goodness in the middle of Paul getting ready to just persecute churches, doing a bunch of crazy stuff. And his goodness changed his whole life. And brought him to repentance. Brought him to repentance. The he changed his mind. On that road. What was that? I forget where Damascus Damascus Road. Yeah. And you cannot outrun. You cannot outrun his goodness. Yep. His goodness and mercy will follow you today and all the days of your life. You can't outrun it. You know, the thing about it is sometimes people look for excuses to just keep acting crazy. Okay. Now that's one thing. But you know, if you will submit and you believe the goodness of the Lord. I believe as you believe the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, like you said, continues. It's God's goodness that changes the way you think. 
it changed Paul's way. Paul was was actually trying to execute what he had saw under the law. He thought, man, this yes. is good. This is what you're supposed to do when you find people acting like this. Yes, we changed his mind. We saw that just how God's goodness. I mean, we never thought we never planned to do any of this. Hadn't planned to no. be on here every day no, or no, 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 no. Um, be in ministry and church and all of that. No, I mean, no, no. it's the goodness of God that changed us. Yeah. I mean, I who would have thought that all of this would be happening, but it's no. a, a tribute to God's goodness yeah. that caused us to just live and experience the things that we are experiencing. It will change you once you continue in it. So mm -hmm. don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't quit. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, just think that it's doing no good in your relationships, in your life and spending time with God and serving God. I mean, it just gets to a point where you, God just blows your mind because really I mean, does. you just, yeah. I mean, you're, you're on to something great. So God is not out to get you or to do you in. <laughs> he is for you and not against you. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. Isn't he? Mm -hmm. he he's good. And he's got the rap for being bad. He's not bad. God, he's a good God. Somebody said, well, how come this happened? Why can't? Because there's a devil loose. Yes. There's a devil loose. And the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come to give life, not take life. I've come to give life and to give it to you more abundantly, to the full, until it overflows. I, he didn't come to take no life. Don't give him no credit. There are other actors in that movie. You understand? Yes. And, 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 and Jesus is not responsible for that. Praise God. He came. He comes to give life, not to take it. That's right. Somebody says, well, what if he took life? Well, you just say, you say what I did. I never forget when that, you remember years ago when um, I was working for the uh, Fulton County uh, Parks and Recreation and this little boy died, drowned. And it, 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 it did a number on me. It did a number on me. And man, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm like, Lord, why did you take this little boy? Why did you let this little boy drown like that? And, you know, I'm going all to the extreme. Well, Lord, take my life and let him have life. You know, I was a young man. I you know I was talking about it. He didn't do it. I got mad at him. I just thought, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to serve some God that's going to take the life of a little kid. Yeah. And I there stay, are situations where people feel as if God is responsible uh, for, responsible those. for yeah. those things. Yeah. Those are terrible things. They were terrible. And I realized that. And I, and I was in a room, this guy started prophesying. He was from overseas. And I thought my buddy had told him all of my business about this situation. And he said that he said, God doesn't come. Jesus didn't come to, to take life. He came to give life. He said, uh, the devil's responsible for that. That's good and I, I realized that. And I asked God, I said, all right, how do I get him back? I said, how do I get him back? Now that I know the responsible party, how do I get him back? I'll never forget this. He said, learn how to act more like me. I was like, what? He said, learn how to act more like me. I said, amen. Praise God. Become more like me. That's good because there are some people who are probably watching and listening to this who have had situations in their life and they think if he's so good yeah why this happened why did this happen and why that happened we're excited about the fact that he you know is showing his goodness to us yeah but there are situations and so for that um say that again well i mean you know they take the scripture and some of that they learn from church they take the scripture, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And here's the problem with this. And again, I'm going to teach this at my minister's conference uh, this week. You got to understand how to rightly divide the word of truth. And you got to understand who's doing the speaking. Right now, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. It's in the Bible, but God didn't say it. Job said it. And Job said it in a deranged mind. And later on in the book of Job, he, he apologized for saying that. Once he recognized, you know, who God was, that that wasn't God who did that. Yes. Now, how many things have you put up pinned on God? How many things have you blamed God for? I, if God was really that good, then he, how come I didn't get that job? Or how come I, you know, got abused when I was growing up? Or how come I, because there's a devil loose 
And that's even more of a motivation to get born again and get in the word and learn the word of God and beat the devil's brain out for what he what he did. Go get it. And here's the deal. Jesus is already here's more goodness. He's already beat the brains out of the devil. I mean, he's already a defeated foe. Satan is already defeated. And uh, I mean, you, you know, you know, when somebody just laying there, just kick him again. He's already defeated. He is not. He doesn't even know victory. He is defeated. Praise God. Because of what Jesus did. That's goodness. That's the goodness of God that whipped up and gave you vengeance. In, in a sense, you have vengeance because of his goodness. Praise God. But stop blaming God for all the stuff that there are three parties here. Yeah, there's the devil. There's you, uh huh, you, uh -huh. and then there's God. But now we dismiss the the other two, and we only blame God for everything. No, no, you, 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 the devil had a part, you had a part, and then your bad decisions had a part. But now God gets the blame for everything, and I'm telling you, He is good. God is a good God, and the devil is a bad devil. How plain can I make it? God's a good God and the devil's a bad devil. Now make your mind up right now. I'm going to get on the Lord's side and I'm not going to get on this side and let the devil, of course the devil going to tell you God did that. If God is so good, then why he let my, 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 my relative die. Why he let me, why he let me lose my job and all that. Stop it, man. Ooh, stop it. So all that God does towards us is grounded in the solid truth as we close that he is good and that he loves us. Mm -hmm. Man, Taffy, the time went by real quick. Time is gone. Oh, somebody says we get Psalm 91 equipped. Say this out loud. I am Psalm 91 equipped. I am Psalm 91 equipped. Yes, you are. You equipped. <laughs> Amen. You're equipped for the week. You're equipped for today. Amen. It's going to be great. So be an expectation. All right. It's a good day. Set your thermostat. To uh, just be an expectation. He's Something's good is going to happen to you. Something good is going to happen to you today. In Jesus' name. We love you guys. Bye-bye, everybody.